Today is going to be the last lecture on Tayyamum. We already talked about what Tayyamum uh, uh, refers to, when it is to be uh, performed only in the event of no water is available. And also you have to make attempt to search for the water. Now, there are exceptions in which Tayyamun can be used when water is available. For example, if you're sick, there's a, a cast on your arm and the doctor told you not to wet the, the, the cast, then you can do Tayyamun over the cast, but you have to do wudu over the rest of your body. Okay? Or say, for example, there's danger. You can't get to the water because your life is in danger. Or the water is too dangerous for you to use. It's too cold or something. Then in that case, you can do Tayyamun. And today what we're going to do is speak about how the procedure is done. In fact, how do we perform Tayyamun? Okay, first of all, as with any action of worship, you have to have the intention. In order for a law to accept your uh, uh, prayer, or any other act of worship, you have to have the intention to do it to please the law. And we already talked about how the intention lies in your heart. You don't have to say anything. All you have to do is just think. The fact that you're thinking about uh, doing Tayyamun to please the law, that's your intention. And after you have the intention in your heart, then you mention Allah's name. Allah Akbar. Say Allahu Akbar and then strike the dirt or the earth, the ground with your hands, the palms of your hands. And then you, again, and this is important, you are striking the ground, the dirt, the soil with your hand. You're not rubbing your hands in it. You're taking your hands just like in the first picture. He's hitting the ground, hitting the ground with his palms. And then what are you going to do? You're going to then uh, uh, lift the hands up and wipe the face like you see in the second picture. You're going to wipe the face. Just take them and just wipe over the face. One wipe from the, the top of the, of the forehead down to the chin. That's it. And then you're going to wipe your hands, rub your hands together like you see in this third picture. Rub your hands together up to the wrist. Now, I just looked at the picture I'm using here. What is this? What is this picture here? I guess this is a picture of somebody using a rock. I think they're using a rock or something. They're rubbing their hands over the rock. I don't like this picture, and I didn't know this was on this picture, guys, because this is what some Shiite people do, I know. They use rocks and stuff. You know, you should be striking the ground, guys. Forget this second picture here, but I guess what they're doing is showing how they rub over rock. If there's no um, dirt, they use a rock. That's They're basing it on that thing about no dirt, you can use a rock, Okay. But this is what you do. You're going to take your hands. We all have the ground underneath us. Like we said, you're stuck in that cabin. You're stranded in that cabin. You take your hands and hit the ground. Hit the ground. Strike the ground with the, your hand with the palms open. And then lift your hands and start at the top of your head, your forehead and go down to wipe your face. One wipe. One wipe is all you do. And then you rub your hands together up to the wrist, and that is it. That's all you do. You don't wipe your feet. You don't wipe your head. 
You don't do the arms or any of that. And that's based on the following hadith where one of the companions said, we became sexually impure and we had no water. So we rolled around in the dirt and then we made salat. When we got back to Medina, we told the prophet what we had done. And he said, all you would have had to do was this. And he took his hands and struck the earth and then he blew over them. And then he wiped his face and then he wiped his hands. And that's it. So here you can see the prophet told them, you don't have to roll around in no dirt. And I do know a lot of Muslims who think they're supposed to roll around in the sand. No. All you have to do is tap the ground. Tap the ground with the palms of your hands. And then you see the prophet blew over him. The, them. Why did he blow over the hands? The reason why he blew over the hands is so as not to put the dirt or the dust on his face. You're not smearing the dirt in your skin, guys. You're not smearing the dirt on you at all. So that's why the prophet blew in his hands first to blow off any stray dust or any stray dirt. So what am I going to do? Tap the, hand, the ground with my, the palms of my hand. Raise my hands up and blow them to get any dust off. And then wipe my face from the top of the head, forehead to the chin. And then I'm going to rub my hands together. And that is it. That's it. And of course, you only have to do it one time. You don't do it three times. You don't do it two times. You just do it once, and that's it. See how easy that is? Allah made things easy for us. We make it hard for ourselves. And so now what I, what I want to do is speak about the instances in which you can, in which your, your uh, tayammum is permissible. And first of all, I want you guys to understand, once you do Tayyamun, you are considered pure by a law. And that means you can go ahead and perform your prayers. You can read the Quran, touch the Quran, and everything else. And guess what? You do not have to make Tayyamun before every prayer. It's just like the wudu. You don't have to renew your tayammum unless you break it. Unless you do something to, that would break your wudu, you have no reason to renew it. You can pray as many prayers as you wish with that one tayammum unless you do something to break your wudu. Okay? And where's my evidence? Because there's a lot of Muslims out there that think that you have to make tayammum before every prayer. Where is this crazy woman's proof? Well... The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, The earth is a purifier for, for a Muslim, even if he does not find water for 20 years. And if he touches water, that is to make a wudu and so on, it would be good. So there's your proof. So it's just like a wudu. Once you do tayammum, it's just as good as a wudu. You don't have to renew it unless you do something to break it. And again, what are the things that will break your tayammum? Well, I want you guys to remember, tayammum can only be performed in the advent of no water. And again, you have to look for the water too. In addition, the things that invalidate tayammum are the same things that would invalidate wudu. So that's the answer. What are the things that will break my tire moon? The same things that break the wudu. Does everybody understand that? Also, what about this? I made tire moon. Later on, I find some water. Do I have to repeat my prayers? I want you guys to know you do not have to repeat your prayers when you come upon water. If you made tayammum, you're, it's the same as having a gusso. It's the same as having a wudu. Allah has accepted you as being pure. And Allah has accepted your prayers. 
You do not have to repeat them when you come upon water because there's a lot of Muslims that were taught that they have to redo, uh, take a gusso or take a, 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 a wudu after they come upon water. This is not correct. And again, where's my evidence? Well, one of the companions shares with us that two men went on a journey. The time of prayer came and they had no water, so they performed Tayyamun. They continued on with their travels and they came upon some water. One of them repeated his prayer with wudu made from water, but the other companion did not repeat his prayer. When they got back to Medina, they asked the prophet which one of them was correct. And the prophet said to the one who did not repeat his prayer, he said, you are the one who acted according to the sunnah. And your prayer is sufficient for you. He told the other brother, you did not have to make wudu. I mean, you did not have to repeat your prayer, but since you did, it will count as a, an extra reward for you. So there's the evidence, guys. There's the evidence. If a person prays with Tayyamun, he does not have to repeat the prayers when he finds water. Remember this hadith. Also, if a person comes across water before he prays or finishes his prayer with Tayyamun, his prayer becomes null and void because, again, we can only do Tayyamun in the advent of no water. So there you go, Sister Umi Beryl. Sister Umi Beryl. Remember Umi Beryl's question. Well, what about this? What if you only got a few minutes to pray? Do I still need to go, and, uh, go get, the, uh, get the water or can I just go outside and do the Tayyamun? If you come across water before you pray, then your prayer is null and void. You know you got water up the street at the store. Get your behind in your car, go get the water, and then come back and pray. Because, again, Taya Moom is only in the advent of no water. Also, guys, the same rule about not having to repeat your prayer applies to women who uh, did Taya Moom because their menses ended. Say, for example, uh, uh, you're stuck in a, stranded in a, in a cabin in a hurricane or uh, I mean a blizzard or something and can't get out. Your period, you had no running water. It was too dangerous for you to go out and, and, and use the snow because of the blizzard. So you did tie a moon because your period ended. Then guess what? After the blizzard ends and you take a bath, you do not have to repeat those prayers. But you still have to make gussel because you guys know that, right? You still got to clean yourself up. Once the hurricane or the uh, once the uh, uh, tornado or whatever it is is over, Allah accepted your prayer because of the circumstances. But now that it's over and your water is running and fixed again, you have to go in there and make a gussel. That's just common sense. And that's based on the following evidence. The prophet led the people in prayer and afterwards saw a man who didn't pray. The prophet asked him, why didn't you pray with us? He said, because I was sexually unclean and I had no water. The prophet told him, use the soil and that'll be enough. Later, they found water. And when they found the water, the prophet brought a bowl of it to the man and told him to now take gusso. So you see that, you know, if, if there is no water and you do tie a moon to clean yourself from your menses or from being sexually defiled, that prayer counts. But when you're able to come upon water, you still need to take a gussel. Okay, you don't have to make the prayer over, but you do have to take the gussel. Okay, and so now we're going to speak about tie a moon over a cast or tie a moon over a bandage. We talked about this yesterday. It is permissible to wipe over any bandage 
or any disease or injured body part. We have many hadiths on this, and although most of those hadiths are weak, the fact that their chains are strong strengthen them. And the best of those hadiths is the one that we talked about before, the hadith of Jabir. He tells us about a man who was on a journey and he suffered from an injury. While he slept, he had a wet dream. And he asked his companions, should he take a, a, take a bath or do Tayamun? They told him he has to take a bath. So he took a bath and he died as a result. And when the prophet heard about it, he said they killed him. He said all he would have had to do was just uh, perform Tayamun over the injury. And he could have used the water for the rest of his body. Okay, so again, that high deep there, you know, uh, it has a, so many strong chains, which is a proof that uh, of that. So uh, you can, you know, again, you can't use the tire moon to replace the rest of your body parts, but it can replace the one that's in a cast. Look at this picture. This man's arm and hand is in a cast. If the doctor told him that he cannot get the cast wet, then in that case, he would do Tayamum over his hand and cast. But if the doctor said he can get them wet, then he would wet, wet his hand, other hand lightly and then wipe over the top of the cast and his hand. Okay? Also, when we talk about a cast or a bandage, it is not necessary for you to be in a state of purity when you when the cast was applied. Remember we talked about wiping over the shoes, wiping over the socks. What is the rule? The rule is you must have put those shoes or those, those socks on while you were in a state of purity. Well, that doesn't apply to the cast. You don't have to be in a state of purity uh, uh, when the cast is put on to do tie your mom over it. Also, remember with the socks and the shoes, when we do their wiping, there's a time limit. 24 hours if you're not a traveler. Three days if you are. Well, there is no time limit for wiping over a cast or a bandage. You can do it as long as that condition lasts. But you do need to understand once that doctor removes the bandage or once that cast is taken off this nullifies the wiping you now have to do water will do over it and I like this picture this shows a person totally bandaged up he's gonna use the water if the doctor told him it's okay to wet his uh his leg his foot he's gonna use the water to wipe over the foot if not he can do tie a moon over it okay and then finally, this is the big question. What do you do if you are unable to get to any water or dirt? Look at this picture. This is a man who was in a terrible accident. He's in a complete body cast from head to toe. Look at him. He cannot get out the bed to get to any water. And he sure can't hobble out to get no dirt to hit the ground. So what do you do if a person is unable to perform wudu or a person is unable to perform tayamum due to being in a situation like this? What do you do? Do you not pray? In this case, you simply make your prayer without the wudu. Make your prayer without doing tayamum and Allah will accept it. Does everybody understand there? Understand it. But you have to be in a condition like this where you are unable. There's no one to call. Help! Help! I need somebody to bring me some water. The nurse doesn't hear you. Help! Help! Nobody comes. You look up two hours and went by. Oh my God, it's almost time for the prayer to end. What do I do? Allah, Akbar, you just go ahead and make your prayer. Make your prayer, you know, without the wudu. And where's my evidence? Well, the hadith of Aisha, 
Remember she borrowed a, a, a bracelet from asthma and it broke off and fell? And the prophet sent some people to look for it? When the time for prayer came, they didn't have any water. So they prayed without wudu. That is the evidence. That's the strongest proof that in the event that there is no water around, and you're unable to do Tayamun, then you go ahead and pray without the wudu. Even if you got off your menses, say this is a woman. <laughs> I poor woman. She got off her menses. Oh, Lord, ain't nobody here to clean me. It's time to pray. Allahu Akbar. And just go ahead and pray. Pray in your mind. Okay? And Allah will accept it based on our intentions. Okay? So thus, guys, those are all the rulings that re relate to Tayyamum. I want you guys to remember Tayyamum is a blessing. A blessing given to the Prophet Muhammad by Allah. And given to us by Allah. Tayyamum is only to be performed in the advent of no water. And you have to look for water too. Okay? You cannot use a tire moon to replace the water or to replace at all. It can only be, you know, as a backup because no water is available. But also remember there are exceptions. For example, say your life is in danger and you cannot get to the water, then you can use the earth. Or say, for example, the water is, is too cold or the water would be life-threatening, then you can use the earth. Okay? And also remember, when doing tayamum over a body part because of a cast or a bandage, that doesn't mean that you do tayamum over the rest of the body parts. You use water for the other hand, but you can uh, take the water and wipe over the cast of the uh, the casted hand, unless your doctor tells you you can't get the cast wet. Then you would just do, use the dirt to do tayamum over that one hand. And remember, when we perform Tayyamun, we're not putting dirt over our body. We're simply tapping the ground like this man is doing lightly with your hand. And then you're going to blow the dirt off or blow the dust off and then do one wipe from the top of your forehead down to your chin. And then you're going to take both hands and rub them together. And that's it. Okay. Tomorrow, what I'm going to do is give you guys an exam to cover everything that we talked about, about Tayyamun. And then the next day, what I'll do is begin discussion of menses, purifying yourself after menses. So we'll stop right here for today. Suna Baba, protectors of the Suna, Suna Baba, protectors of the Suna.